Debbie, Debbie, how does is is it a cycle of self sabotage? Is it, is it that you you go into a cycle of self sabotage and it just keeps repeating on you? Is is it, is it like a habit seeking this? You know, you said if you, if you're guilty, you seek a punishment. It's it's almost like seeking your own karma. Is that a, is that a habit that you can break free of? Absolutely, you can definitely break free of it. The whole book is really about you know ultimately the solution. It is an unconscious impulse, an evolutionary impulse that is implanted in every single human so that we can learn and we can open up and we can tell the truth in the places we've been in denial. You know, I write 20 pages. I mean, how much have we all heard about denial? But really, we are in such denial. We are de- denial as a society, as a culture, as as uh, in our families. We're denial of ourselves. I mean, of course, that great Buddhist saying, which I've written three books on, is there's only one person in the world you can't see. Who's that? It's ourselves. And so this don't even notice I am lying. We must find out how we participate. I went through something a couple of years ago where I was really participating in somebody else's self-sabotage. Ultimately, it affected me, and I could see it was my own. But meanwhile, I was the savior trying to fix somebody else's, but really it wound up taking my energy away, my life force, deadening me, which was a form of self-sabotage. So the healing process is ultimately the solution is the same for the victim and the victimizer. We must go on this spiritual journey, not in our heads which is part of what is happening out there, is people are learning this information. They know what I'm saying. They know what other teachers are saying, but it's all stuck in their minds. And my work is the journey from the head to the heart because until we can feel it and know it in our hearts, you know, I I always say knowing's the booby prize at some level. I I don't... um, I wonder if... I wonder if you, we, we tend to build our denials into our own life story. Is that how we do it? Is that how we're able to hide it from ourselves? Exactly. We hide it because the impulse, the natural impulse in all human beings is to be loved, to belong, to feel important like we matter. Those are just natural. They're innate in us, right? Right. And then the minute that we were told, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't that, don't be mean, don't be a liar, don't be angry, don't be too happy, don't be too loud, don't be too self-expressed, don't be too smart, don't brag, people aren't going to like you. All of that starts to shape us. It programs us. We don't understand. We're, we're like human computers, and we all have software that needs an update. You know, can you imagine if we were using the same software that was around 20 years ago? I agree. You know, so we need human software. We need new updates. But most people think, I'm not going to get rid of the, you know, what do you do? You have to press the delete button on some level. And that's what I try to show people. You know, how do we press the delete button of that old program? And we have to embrace it. We can't get out of the repetitive patterns of our past until we are willing to learn our soul's lessons in those, whether we're the victim or the victimizer, there are lessons to be learned, and there's ways for us to open our hearts, which are, you know, magnificent for any of us who have gone through that process. I mean, surrender is the ultimate gift that will lead you to a life beyond your wildest dreams. My sister and I, you probably know my sister, Arielle Ford, has written many books, and she... um you know, we always laugh because if we had gotten what we had on our treasure maps, you know, on our vision boards, we would have stopped about 10 years ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> but if you keep doing your inner work and allow, that's really the process that I'm trying to support people in, not this creating, but how do we allow? How do we allow ourselves to be used for something greater than ourselves? Because that has us be able to digest the patterns. You know, it's a humble place to come from, that we're not here just for our own self. We're here for the collective. We absolutely are. And, Debbie, actually, we're going to go to to break. What a fantastic show. So happy to have Debbie Ford on. The feedback's going crazy. I will definitely get to the feedback, guys, so keep listening. You're listening to Empowered Living Life, the Truth, and Being Free. We We are talking with Debbie Ford. She's the author of Why Good People Do Bad Things, How to Stop Being Your Own Worst Enemy. 
Her website is DebbieFord.com. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're listening to Empowered Living Life, the Truth, and Being Free. I'm your host, Steve Maraboli. For more information about A Better Today, our speeches, programs, seminars, please visit abettertoday.com or stevemaraboli.com. And don't forget all the information about our radio show. Our expansion is available at empoweredlivingradio.com. We're having a great conversation with Debbie Ford. She's the best-selling author of Why Good People Do Bad Things, How to Stop Being Your Own Worst Enemy. Debbie's website is debbieford.com. Debbie, when we went to commercial, we were talking about <clears throat> people building these habits and these cycles of of uh, of being their own worst enemy, of self sabotage. And you were saying that you can't really move on until you learn the lessons, the reasoning for that self sabotage, right? Yeah. And you know, it's they're usually not that <laughs> difficult a lesson. I mean, <laughs> I'm a very resistant person. That's why I write self help. You know, <laughs> I like I like I always have to motivate myself. Right. So. Um, but there are usually things like, you know, knowing that, you know, that there's some things you have power over and some things that you don't. You know, maybe you're involved in somebody else's life, being a people pleaser all the time, when really there's some gift, some action you have to take. Maybe you have to finally handle your weight or your health, you know, or your money. Because, as you know, I'm sure you get a lot of it, you know, um, and I define the different mass of the wounded ego. I mean, we all wear a mass, but the people that stay in kind of this victim mode, it's, you know, it's just a mode. <laughs> you can get out of it. You know that it's a mass that you're getting. You know, we can stay in the repetitive cycles of our shame, really, and let our shame drive our future, or we have to get out. We have to put ourselves in structures, get coaches, get a therapist, get a best year of your life group, you know, come onto a community like mine or any of the other teachers and and start having somebody hold you accountable. You know, discipline is the key to freedom. And it's kind of the cosmic joke, isn't it? it, it it's putting yourself in an environment that grows what you want as opposed yeah. to being in the environment that grew <laughs> what you don't want. Yeah, that's a beautiful way to say it. And to really know that, you know, our hearts are here to are here to heal and that we all have hurt. And toxic hurt is the thing that drives us to continually listen to that internal conversation, which I'm going to assert most people are addicted to. It has become an addiction. If you have listened to that same thought in your mind over a 100 times and you keep going back listening to that same thought, then you are addicted to it. And like any addiction, where do we start? We start in admitting that we're powerless that we need some resource greater than ourselves, which we all have inside of ourselves. We need to reconnect with that resource and allow ourselves to open. You know, the ego, and this book is about the internal war, the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the true self and the false self, the lower self and the higher self. The ego, it has a place. It's the part of me that will say, you know, I can write a seventh book or an eighth book or a ninth book. We need a healthy ego, but when the ego gets wounded, which I'm going to assert is the problem here, and it happens to all of us, it takes over. It it shuts the light out, and the light is half of who we are, and we're both human and divine, and this book is about getting the ego back where it belongs so that the light can come to us and through us, and that light can heal anything. 